Good afternoon. I'm really excited to be finishing this afternoon's series of fantastic talks. Um, for the last three years, I've been working on the development of uh, toxicity assays. So they're really commonly used, and there are already some in place. But what I've been trying to do is actually improve what we already have, from a simple colour change assay to a fluorescent assay, something that actually emits light. Why is this so important? Well, toxicity assays are used almost every single day in the pharmaceutical industry. If you want to put a drug or any biological uh, chemical into a person's body, it's great if it, it stops your headache. But if it also kills the person, it's not so good. So actually, our number one priority is to prevent toxicity. And at the moment, we do this by using a colour-changing chemical. We're really lucky because we can look at cells. So what we can actually do is expose some cells in a petri dish to a drug, and if those cells either die or aren't so healthy, then it's a good indication that that drug will also be toxic to a, an organism. So we can actually use this to great effect. And we take a colour-changing chemical that goes from yellow to red in healthy cells. So you add this to cells that have already seen a potential drug. If it goes red, that's great because it means the thing's not toxic. The problem is, all we're really measuring is degree of redness which is a, sort of a difficult thing to quantify. So what I actually wanted to do was look at something that we could actually measure more uh, effectively, and that's fluorescence. And there's a really good example of this if you think of a cyclist. If you think of someone wearing normal clothes, cycling down the road, they tend to blend in with the background. If you then add a fluorescent sash to them, they'll stand out because suddenly they're emitting light, and you can actually see them um, regardless of the background. So I've done this by taking the original colour-changing compound and modifying it and adding... All I've done is actually attach something that I know is fluorescent. So I've attached another chemical that I know emits light. And I was really pleased. It was fantastic. It worked. So we actually managed to make a chemical that emitted green light. Even better than that, I could do a chemical reaction on it to go from something that didn't emit light to something that did after a chemical reaction, which is very similar to the yellow to red reaction that would happen in cells. This was really pleasing. However, unfortunately, when I put this in real cells, I found out that cells also emit light. They emit green light, which is the same as my compound, which also emitted green light. So, of course, suddenly you can't see anything at all. So now what I'm trying to do is adapt the molecule I have to make it emit orange light or red light. And I'm really doing this quite simply by increasing the size of my molecule. And so far, I've got one potential that's very slightly red fluorescent, and in the next few months, the last few months of my PhD, I plan to improve that and hopefully get a working fluorescent toxicity test that can actually replace the current colour change assays. Thank you very much.